Archie. It's you. Who else? I thought it might be Dougal. Aye, with a gun. Have you seen it? Yeah. Archie, there's some of this I don't remember. Well, I did add a few refinements. Wide interests including ballet and foreign travel. I never imagined it would ever be published. Dougal will have a hairy fit. Well, surely I'll realise it's a joke. Oh, aye, you're quite right, Archie. I mean, Dougal's always had a great sense of humour, eh? Well, maybe he'll no see it. Well, if he doesn't, somebody else will. Well, I wonder what you do, Bob. I suppose you better own up. What do you mean, you? Listen, we're in this together. We, then? So what we're supposed to say, eh? Sorry, Dougal, it was us that advertised for a wife for you. But it was just a joke. <laughs> I mean, we didn't really mean to send it to the Crofton farmer. Maybe we should just wait and see what happens. Aye. I mean, we're all said and done it. It might just blow over. Aye. No. Morning, Bob. Lorna. I haven't interrupted something, have I? No, no. Well, then what are you both looking so guilty about? Guilty? Guilty? Come on, what are you up to? Aye, uh, well, what to do? Hey? Aye, uh, so have I. <laughs> and uh, you're feeling all right, are you? Oh, I'm fine, Lorna, just fine. Archie, I think that's the estate's copy of the Crofter and Farmer, isn't it? Oh, aye, uh, so it is. Have you heard from Sheila yet? Not a word. She'll get in touch with you very soon. Just a phone call or a postcard. That's all it would take to tell her she's all right. Mm. You know, we had the same worry a wee while ago when Kate, my niece, left home, but she turned up safe and well. Now, that everything? I think so, yes. At the moment, I'm more worried about Dan than I am about Sheila. He's making himself ill, thinking the worst. He blames himself. Oh, I'm sure he's got nothing to reproach himself with. Only that he's always been too soft with her. She could do no wrong. He spoiled her and now he's paying the price. We all are. You know, it looks to me as if Sheila's just gone away for a few days to think things over. She'll be in touch. There are times I think it would be best if we never saw her again. Oh, now you don't mean that, Irene. You expect so much from an only child. Too much, perhaps. And it's disappointing to find that she's grown up to care for nobody but herself. I just hope to God she's all right. Oh, she will be. She will be. Isabel, uh, Dan has this idea that Jimmy might know where Sheila is. Oh, I'm sure he doesn't. Oh, I, I know he probably just in Dan's mind, but Jimmy did take her over to Octan uh, the day she left. Oh, the ferry is a public service, Irene. Yes, yes, I know, and, and I'm not suggesting that he was helping her. But he was the last person that she spoke to, and Dan, well, Dan got the feeling that Jimmy was trying to hide something. Hi, Mum. I'm just off to get married. Hello, Mrs. Lamb. Uh, why don't you ask him yourself? Ask me what? Dan's got this idea that you know more about Sheila's whereabouts than you're saying. Do you? Look, Mrs. Lamond, if I'd known the morning I took Sheila to Octan that she was running away from home, I'd have done everything in my power to try to stop her. She told me she was going to stay with relatives. I had no reason to doubt that. No, no, of course not, Jimmy. Uh, I'm sorry. Dan, he's, he's not too rational these days. Not since Sheila told us she was pregnant. Well, thanks. Anyway, is it all? Jimmy. Poor woman. Bye. Jimmy, if you did know where Sheila was, you'd tell us, wouldn't you? Of course I would. And you don't know, do you? No, no, I don't. Anyway, look, I better go. I'm late for Marion. Uh, we'll both be down later, OK? I just couldn't believe my eyes. Are you sure it's, it's our Dougal? Dougal Lachlan, I'd been by Glendara. Hey, let me see it. Wedwer seeks woman with a view to matrimony. What a way to put it. And then there's all that nonsense about his good appearance. And how mature he is and how wide his interests are. <laughs> it's a lot of lies. No previous experience required. <laughs> yeah, he must have had a dram too many when he wrote this. I'm feeling sorry for himself. But he certainly wasn't considering my feelings. <laughs> More of a... Sorry, I 
always thought it was because of Amy he didn't want to get married again. I tried to accept that. What that advertisement proves is that it's me he doesn't want to marry. Any stranger will do rather than me. If he'd only used a box number. Oh, I wish I could run away somewhere. Everyone must be laughing at me. I will be too angry with Dougal to laugh at anything. What's my father going to say? And I tried to bring his paper out with me to lose it. Then he asked me for it just as I was leaving the house. But I mean, it's not as though you and Dougal were still engaged. Well, my father thinks we are. But I didn't bother telling him I'd broken it off with Dougal because... Well, because I thought it would all blow over in a couple of weeks. Oh, Wallace. Oh, Morag. So much has happened while you've been away, Fiona. New projects. The deer farm, the fish ranching. And now a chance that we might be able to make some real income from our peatland. All using natural resources and employing only our own people. It's very exciting. I hope it all goes well for you. Look, why don't we take the Land Rover up to the deer farm? You haven't seen it yet. I don't think I feel like looking at wild creatures in an enclosure. You've hardly left the house. I went to the Aqua Sports last night. A trip on the ferry with Jimmy might blow a few of the cobwebs away. Mum, Jimmy's got his own life to live. You have too. Have I? I wonder if I was wise to bring you home so soon. One place is very much like another. Oh, Fiona. I just wish there was something I could say or do that would help. There is one subject you seem to have avoided very carefully since I came home. Oh? Alec Geddes. He's still up at the farm. For the time being, he's working out his lease. Is he? Where are you going? Out for a walk. I thought that's what you wanted. I'm going to the village. Is that all right? See you then, John. Bye bye again. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Good day, Mrs. Bye bye. Is it morning, Mrs. Oh, quite busy, yes. And of course, I haven't got Brian to help me today. Not that I'm complaining about that. I just hope this peak business with Ken works out for him. He's pinning so much hope on it. In fact, it's just the way he was when the sawmill started and I'd hate him to get disappointed again. Come on, Mum. Don't think that far ahead. It's just nice to see him so pleased with himself. Aye, he is, isn't he? <laughs> Here, have you thought anything about what you're going to let him buy you for a present? Oh, no, that's just ridiculous, him buying me presents for no reason at all. Oh, but there is a reason. If nothing else, just to make him feel good. So go on, let him buy you something. Mm, we'll see. <laughs> He's very free with his advice today, isn't he? Oh, yes, and moral support. We're going up to the big house later. I thought I ought to say goodbye to Mrs Cunningham. You surely don't need moral support for that, do you? Yeah, Mum. Oh, Jimmy, there was a letter this morning for Mr Murdoch from the Lifeboat Institution, looked like. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we could take a look in on Mr Murdoch on the way up to the big house, then. Well, if you like. Uh, no, Jimmy, I don't think you should do that. See, it was the community council who wrote to the Lifeboat Institution, so you'll have to wait and hear your answer from them. Oh. Huh. Protocol? Eh? Listen, if you want the council's help, you're going to have to keep on the right side of them. Aye, I suppose you're right. Anyway, come on, we better go. Uh, Jimmy. Oh, I nearly forgot. Listen, Mum, since I'm going to Glasgow anyway, I thought I might as well look in on Frank Riddle and see how he is. Maybe stay the night there. Do you have a forwarding address for him? Aye, I huh? do. I'll look it out for you. Come away in, Jamie. Not a bad day for the time of year now, is it? Look, Grace. I haven't come all this way just to have a chat about the weather. What have you come for, then? It's your Dougal I'm after. Is he not here? No, he's not. Then where is he? Well, he didn't say. He, he could be out on the hill, or he could be down at the deer farm. Aye, he could be hiding from me more than likely. Now, why would he be doing that? Well, that is something between me and him. Although, no doubt, the whole world probably knows about it by now. Well, if I see him before you do, is there a message you would like me to give him? Yes. You tell him from me he's a... he's a snake in sheep's clothing. He's a wolf in the grass. And what's more, 
He's the blackest villain I've ever had the misfortune to share a dram with. better dropping him from a great height. What are you talking about? Well, you are trying to break them, aren't you? I'm in no mood for jokes. So what have I done? Nothing. That's a relief. Oh, it's Dougal. What's he done? The way he's treating that poor girl. Morag? Well, who else? <laughs> so what's new? What's new is that now he's excelled himself, humiliated her in public. How's he done that? You'll never guess in a hundred years. He's only advertised for a wife, hasn't he? In the papers, for the whole world to see. I mean, it's just unforgivable. Doesn't sound like something Dougal would do. Well, that's what I thought, but... Uh, uh, there it is, in black and white. I mean, poor Morag. She was so upset, and I mean, no wonder. I mean, he kept up the pretense of that so-called understanding with her all that time when he, well, obviously never had any intentions of marrying her. Wait a minute, Alice. There might be some other reason for it. Maybe it was a joke. A joke? And what's funny about it? Depends on how you look at it. Oh. You mustn't go jumping to conclusions. Look, I, I hope you're not going to defend him, Bob Taylor. No. Because I'd be very disappointed if you do. I just wish that... What? I just wish I could get something to eat in this house. Where are you going to stay in Glasgow, Marion? Well, my mother's arranged me to stay with Hamish McNeil's aunt in North Kelvin side. It's near the Kelvin Bridge. So I thought I should meet her and get settled in before the term starts. Probably very wise. It does take time to get used to new surroundings. Jimmy's coming with me. Oh, I had to carry the cases. <laughs> There's only one case. That'll be loaded down with books, though, I've no doubt. <laughs> Not many. <laughs> oh, now, come to think of it, I might need to borrow another case from Oh, you. I should have known. Here <laughs> we go. <laughs> I have bought one or two things since I've been here. Right. You didn't see Fiona in the village by any chance, did you? No, I didn't. I was hoping she might be up here. No. She went out some time ago. She doesn't seem to have come in for lunch. So things aren't any better, then? I'm afraid not. Well, when I saw her the other night, I just didn't seem to be able to make contact with her at all. I don't think anyone can at the moment, Jimmy. I certainly can't. I was saying to Marion, it's as though she can't, well, can't connect with where she is or who she's there with. To be honest, I've been wondering if I was wise bringing her home so soon. Oh, I'm sure you were. I don't know, Marion. Perhaps she finds it easier being with strangers. Perhaps Glendarroch brings back memories that she's trying to shut out. Surely you're not thinking of sending her back? I don't want to, of course, but if it seems the best thing for her. Oh, Mrs Cunningham, if there's anything I can do to help you, know I will. Thanks, Jimmy. But I have the feeling that the only person who can help Fiona at the moment is Fiona. And first, she's got to want to. Is that you going back to the manse already, Minister? Yes, I have some letters to write, Mrs. Mack. Uh -huh. No doubt you'll be having a fly cup while you're at it. Not an hour since I once to. I might just have a wee cup of tea, Mrs. Mack. And maybe a wee piece of chocolate from the bar in your desk drawer. <laughs> You'd do better with some exercise, Mr. McPherson. A cleansing of the spirit. I don't think my flock would want to see me jogging about the village, Mrs. Mack. And my clerical collar would be entirely unsuitable with a tracksuit. That is not what I meant. Gentle exercise is what you need. Long walks, like Mr. Murdoch is a very, very fit man for his age. To go for walks like Mr. Murdoch, I would need to carry a gun, Mrs. Mack. And I don't think that would go with my clerical collar either. Mr. Murdoch only carries his gun to... To put the poor, wounded rabbits and pheasants out of their misery, I know. Good afternoon, Fiona. Nice to see you back from the hospital, Miss Cunningham. Thank you. Now, there's a young lady paying the price of her sins. What sins are those, Mrs. Mack? She tried to take her own life. Now, we don't know that, Mrs. Mack. 
But even if it were true, she deserves all the sympathy we can give her. I hope I am as charitable as the next person, Minister. But it is clear to me that whatever she did, she's paying for it now. Nice to see you back. Hello, Mrs. Blair. How are you? Fine, thanks. Jimmy is out at the moment, and Brian's up on the peat moss with Ken. He'll be sorry he missed you. Uh, what is it you're looking for, Fiona? Nothing in particular. Well, maybe it was for a cup of tea and a wee blether. Maybe it was. Right, you keep an eye on the shop, then I'll go and put the kettle on. I'll be glad of the excuse. I'm dying for a cup of tea. Oh. Miss Fiona. I, I better be going, I suppose. Oh, thanks. What, are you sure? Yes, thank you. Well, I heard she'd gone a bit strange, but it's worse than I thought. She's been through a lot, Mr. Maddock. It'll take time. You wonder, don't you, what must go on in a person's mind to make them think of killing themselves? She had a riding accident. Oh, that's what they tell us. That is what happened. Aye, well, maybe that's what we'd all like to believe, Mrs Blair. Look, uh, what was it you were wanting? Oh, I'm not here to buy anything. No, I just dropped in to let you know I had a letter from the Lifeboat Institution this morning. Uh, oh, yes? Aye. And they're very sorry, but they can't see their way to help us with a lifeboat in Loch Darragh. Hello. Been up in the mill? Uh-huh. I'm trying to estimate how much peat we've got up there. Looking good, is it? Uh, we've chosen our start point. I think there's a good 10 feet of peat. And uh, about 90 to 100 acres. Oh, so there's a future in it? I think so. Is there any chance you'll be taking on men? Sometime. <laughs> Look, I'll bear you in mind. But you'll probably find something better by then. Uh, there's no much hope of that. Especially when the aqua sports season finishes. No news of Sheila? No. Well, Jimmy and Marion think they might know where she is. Where? Well, I don't know. They're not telling me. Why not? Why don't you ask them? I will. You can bet your life on it. <laughs> ah, it's a real shame you're going tomorrow, isn't it, Mum? Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Another couple of weeks, we'd have turned you into a very efficient ferryman. Oh. Fairy woman. A fairy person. Fairy person. A very efficient fairy person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen. I better tell you this. Put the damper on things. Mr. Murdoch was in, and he says that the lifeboat people can't help us. Well, I was afraid of that when the reply came so soon. That doesn't change the fact we still need a lifeboat on the lock. Well, couldn't you raise the money locally? Well, it's an awful lot of money to look for, Marion. Well, concerts, sponsored walks, jumble sales. That's how we got our school minibus. Oh, well, that's worth thinking about. Hi, oh, Dad. I want a word with you. So what's the big deal? I hear that you and Marion know where Sheila is. Who told you that? Never mind, do you? Eddie Ramsey, he's the only person I could have told you. Jimmy, is it true? What if it is? Then you go and tell the Lamets. No way. Jimmy, if you know, you've got to tell them. You know what they're going through. And what about what they've been putting Sheila through? Oh, come on, Dad. Anyway, we don't know for sure. Marion's got an idea. We're checking it out tomorrow. Which means it's Glasgow. Well, Glasgow's a big city. Well, at least tell them that. And if I do, the Lamets are going to come charging down to Glasgow after us. And her parents and Eddie are the last people in the world Sheila would want to speak to. Oh, Jimmy, you are playing with people's lives. This is dangerous. And if the Lamonts come to Glasgow, Dad, Sheila's going to run away again to somewhere no one will ever find her. If that's not dangerous, what is? Are you sure you've no idea why J.B. Stewart would be so angry? No, no, I haven't. Oh, he's always got some bee in his bonnet, that one. I 
just thought it might be something to do with Morag. Look, it was her that called it off, not me. You've got nothing to blame me for there. You know, there's less in this paper every week. Don't change the subject. Well, I don't want to hear any more about Morag or her father. I just want some peace to read my paper, what there is of it. Well, that's me put in my place, isn't it? <laughs> it's ridiculous. What is? <laughs> some of these daft advertisements. What are you talking about? Oh, you may well ask, Mother. No, 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 here's one here. Mature crofter. <laughs> That'll probably mean he's about 80. <laughs> With own compact property, a presentable widower. Oh, oh, hi. Well, that'll mean he probably had a shave that day. <laughs> Wide interests include <laughs> ballet and foreign travel. <laughs> Doesn't sound like any crofter I know. Oh, oh. Seeks companionship of attractive woman with a view to matrimony. <laughs> No previous experience required. <laughs> oh, dear, dear. Oh, what sort of a man advertises in the papers for a wife, eh? One that's desperate to be married. Oh, nobody could be that desperate. <laughs> Mind you, we could always introduce him to Big Moore, eh? Oh, no, Dougal. <laughs> yeah, does it say where he's from? We might know him. Oh, it'll be a box number, likely. He'd never dare to put his name in. He'd never hear the end of it. No, no, no. Dougal Lachlan, Ard Vane by Glenda... Ruch. Mother, that's me. 